there's a popular saying in leadership that if you think you're leading and there's nobody following you, you are only going on a walk. On this platform, you are going to learn principles of leadership. You are going to encounter different leaders. You are going to learn about how you can grow as a leader, how you can make an impact. My name is Samuel Ayim and I'm the host for the leadership platform. I am a leadership coach, a lawyer by profession, a John C. Maxwell certified coach. I have been in corporate life in senior positions for several years and now I run the Center for Transformational Leadership where we train and coach leaders to become better leaders. And I invite you to go on a journey with us as we discuss the subject of leadership in the coming weeks. This and every Saturday, you have opportunity to ask questions, share your views on important leadership matters. Hi, dear friend, my name is Samuel Ayim and I'm the CEO for the Center for Transformational Leadership. And I'm bringing to you the growth journey. We've set aside 15 weeks of growth to help you to be intentional about your growth. Where do you want to reach in your leadership? Which area of your life do you want to grow in? Growth doesn't just happen. It has to be intentional. So in these 15 weeks, we're going to have a special coaching sessions with you to be able to grow to where you want to grow. And to be able to grow yourself, you need to know yourself. A lot of us are not achieving the maximum we can achieve because we have not invested in our personal growth. We're going to help you in all and more within these 15 weeks. Every week we'll have a session with you. This program is limited to only 15 people. We're gonna have 15 people for 15 weeks and we're gonna learn 15 great growth lessons on this journey. So make a date with us and see you on the growth journey. Hello, 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 hello. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Leadership Platform. My name is Samuel Ayim of the Center for Transformational Leadership in Africa. And this evening, once again, we are excited to come your way with another great leader going to share with us some great lessons on leadership. We thank you for making a date and, and sharing part of your Saturday evening with us. The team is ready, Sarah is connected, uh, Kofi is on the line, Abigail is there, everybody is there, Diana is there, and uh, our speaker is here also ready to share with us. So um, we are going to have a 90 minute section with, with you, and we are hoping that at the end of the day, you would have a better understanding of what leadership is all about. Now, for those of you joining for the first time, we encourage you to introduce yourself in the comment section. If you're joining uh, on Facebook, please share the link, like the page, and um, invite your friends to join because this is going to be a very, very important discussion. So, um, if you are joining on YouTube, also please go ahead and introduce yourself wherever you're joining from. We will be happy to let the world know you are here. Yes, as I see Miss Abby, 
who is excited today, looking forward to learn from Dr. Bassi. So please go ahead and introduce your yourself. Now we um, we are going to discuss an important subject, which is uh, what leadership is and what leadership is not. Uh, what what leadership is and management is not. Um, that's the topic for the for the day. I remember several years ago uh, when I went into my MBA class, I know that this is Master of Business Administration. Then there was a course in leadership. And immediately the question that was uh, in front of all of us is, what is the difference between management and leadership? And uh, this is something that I'm sure that all management and leadership students grapple with and we write uh, theses and essays. But the classroom is even easier. The challenging task is for those of us who are leading organizations, especially businesses, we're leading churches, we're leading groups, to understand the critical skill differences between management and leadership. Because a lot of us are not leading, even though we are called leaders, and we are stuck. And so this evening, we want to throw a bit more light on this. And I, those of you who have been on this platform for some time, we've had this discussion before, but today we have um, a, a, a competent person and, and, and somebody who has been teaching and training leaders uh, for several years to, to, to join us. So uh, Dr. Jeff Bassey is a management a consultant and a corporate trainer uh, with expertise in leadership and strategy. And he's consulted for over 130 organizations in and outside Ghana, including the Bank of Ghana, MTN, APSA, Newmont, Newmont Ghana, VRA, Olam, Tulip, Kempiski, and so on. Um, he's a facilitator for the Bank of Ghana leadership training and he is an agent lecturer at the University of Ghana Business School. Now, Dr. Basi holds a BSc administration and a, a BSc in administration. He holds a Bachelor of Laws um, degree. He holds an MBA and he holds a doctorate degree in strategy. He is also a chartered accountant and a certified senior professional in human resources. Um, and in that respect, he's also the country director of the professional HR certification in Ghana. So when we talk about leadership and management, and we want to understand this is a, this is a man who straddled and who has learned and studied and taught and trained different leaders, and he's able to do justice to us. So um, before Doc comes, let me just quickly say that uh, um, uh, Chief Inspector Dinam Zoiku is on the line from Winneba. Thank you, uh, Chief, for being on the line to learn with us. We have um, Krantima uh, Adiepena Yunis. Uh, uh, Adia Pena Yunis is here with us, joining us from in Sawam, uh, joining from Kumase. That's great. And he says he can't wait to learn. So if you are connected, please um, just introduce yourself and we'll be very happy to, list, to, to, to announce you. So, Doc, you are invited to speak to the, to, to the leaders on the line and to share um, this all important uh, subject. So um, over to you, uh, Jeff, and we thank you for making the time. I don't want to say it, but I mean, guys, Doc has been teaching all day and uh, this is because he has a passion for sharing knowledge. And so we are privileged actually to, to have Doc share with us. Doc. Take Thank you away. so much, uh, Mr. Samuel Ayim and uh, the entire team. 
Uh, indeed, I count it a great privilege to be invited to uh, share my thoughts with you on the subject of leadership. Uh, indeed, leadership is a well-defined or a well-discussed uh, topic, um, and uh, it can be expressed in many spheres. Um, if any one of us had the opportunity to make this presentation, I'm sure you would be discussing with us as something very useful on leadership and that is how come i count it a privilege to be the one to be sharing my thoughts with you on that subject of uh, leadership a very mild soft aspect of running organizations yet have far consequences on the organization i will be sharing uh, thoughts on leadership uh, probably generally because the principles that underpin leadership is very much the same, be it leadership that runs uh, businesses or religious bodies like churches or political leadership or even leadership at the family level. The principles are very much the same. Uh, but for the sake of clarity, I want to inform my audience that I will be zeroing in much more on uh, business leadership or the kind of the leadership required in an organizational environment uh, probably much more than at the family level or at the political level. Now, when we say organization, it doesn't necessarily need to be a profit company. Uh, I'm sure Mr. Yim, who is our leader and uh, a, a qualified lawyer, uh, knows that churches are sort of companies uh, limited by guarantee uh, in our country. So when we talk about organization, churches are very much a uh, part of organization. So my 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 presentation is going to be a bit, uh, you know, bent towards uh, organizational leadership rather than general generic. But I can mention the principles are very much the same and can be uh, applicable to any sphere. I normally like to open my leadership discussions with an open question, and that is on my next slide. Um, uh, can we go to the next slide, Kofi? Next one, please. This is just a disclaimer. Right, so that question of whether you believe that all managers are good leaders. And because we are not in, uh, we don't have the time and we are not in an in-person session, I'm not going to waste your time so much on that. Otherwise, it's a question I would allow my audience or participants in a leadership session to debate. The fact that one is appointed into a position of authority, into a managerial position, be it a first-line manager, like uh, supervisors or branch managers or middle level managers now first line managers usually would manage people and then we have middle level managers who manage managers or the highest level of managers called executives who manage their organization whichever level you are as a manager does that automatically make you a good leader without wasting your time i'm sure that most people listening to me with some leadership orientation would automatically say that not all managers are good leaders. So what is it that separates? Uh, next slide. What is it that separates um, the, the, the manager or the leader from the manager? And that will form the central pivot of our conversation this evening. Now, let me say that running an organization involves two major things, two major areas. And everybody listening to me should know that by now. Leading people and managing systems. Finish. Running an organization is all about leading people, managing systems. One of the organizations I have spent some time training for is Barclays Stand APSA. When its former uh, managing director, uh, Patience Achianu, was interviewed, uh, she the question that was posed at her, people and systems, which one do you prioritize over the other? Well, she laughed and said, well, if this question was asked some years before now, because she was head of finance for APSA before rising to the role of a managing director, and patients would answer that, well, as, an, as a managing director, I can tell you clearly that 
when the people are well managed systems will take care of themselves now we actually don't build businesses nobody builds a business per se you build people who build a business you can start a business yes but as to whether you can build a business to grow it is about people building the business so uh, that that further lends credence to patient Sachano's assertion that when people are led well or people are taken care of organizations or systems take care of themselves next slide i normally would say that everything in an organization is influenced by leadership everything everything because it is only what what happens at the level of leadership that trickles down and affects every other thing in the organization it is only what happens at the level of leadership that trickles down and affect every other thing within the organization so that in an organization if in an organization in a division in a department in a unit on that project on that committee if something good happens it's because of leadership and if nothing good happens it's because of leadership leadership is always the cause and everything else is a, is but an effect so leadership cannot be uh, alienated from the consequences leadership can never be alienated from the consequences now i was fortunate to facilitate um, a strategic session for a company uh, somewhere at a resort outside of Accra, one of those resorts along the Volta Lake. Now, the architecture of that hotel is such that you leave your car outside and then you are driven in or you walk into the hotel. On one fine evening, it was a week-long strategic session I was you know, facilitating for the senior managers. One fine evening when I stepped out into my car to pick a bottle of uh, you know, uh, wine, I was getting back in. I was stopped by a security officer. Hello, good evening, sir. Over here, we don't allow, oh, sorry, he used the word, they don't allow foreign wine here. And I was, with my little orientation and leadership, I would ask, uh, if you say they don't, where do you work? And the gentleman said, I work here. Now, that is somebody who is alienated from uh, the organization. A group of people sitting in an air conditioner office wearing suit and civil and and turning in their civil chair say i should tell you that they don't allow foreign wine here and if i say foreign wine i mean wine that you didn't buy from the hotel now listen to the shocker part of the story and then he was like uh, but this is what i i i suggest sir go back into your car put the wine in a polythene bag so that when you are passing nobody will see you wow the very person who was put there to keep the gates was helping me to crush the gates. But because I was the beneficiary of his directive, I obliged accordingly. But may I say that right there with my leadership orientation, I could tell that there's a possible leadership failure over here. The gentleman knows that there's a vision, there is a policy that says we do not accept foreign wine here. But probably nobody cared to engage him on the conventional wisdom on the reasoning behind that uh, uh directive and so once it doesn't make sense to him he will not uh oblige or he will not go by it i tell you if there was a supervisor standing next to him he would not have acted that way for the fear of the reaction of the supervisor but because he was not engaged now i don't work in that hotel possibly so do you but we can fairly conjecture that the conventional wisdom for that directive would be that uh, we also deal in wines and when you bring foreign wine, business doesn't grow. And possibly if um, um, a, a customer eats anything poisonous, for instance, on our premises, we will be liable. This possibly could be the reason. But because he was not engaged, he couldn't take care of the system. It is only what happens at the level of leadership that trickles down and affects everything else within the organization. If something good happens in that company, it's because of leadership. If nothing good happens, it's because of leadership. 
Now, there's this organization I research that specializes in buying companies that aren't doing well. Once they, they see and they realize that you are not doing well, you become a target, they approach you, make you an offer, and more often than not, the owners of the company were more than willing to accede ownership or to sell off the company to uh, these individuals. Now, when they buy the company, the first two things they do, identify everybody in a leadership position, fire them, clear all of them. Number two, retrain, reorient the mindset of the workforce before you know what next to do with the organization. Now, that example lends further credence to the fact that it is only what happens at the level of leadership that trickles down and affects everything else within the organization. Next. So I usually would ask this rather multi-million uh, dollar question to my audience. And normally, I have, I have spent a lot of time training uh, management teams in leadership conducting leadership sessions for management teams of various companies from Kempiski to uh, Bank of Ghana to Casa Preco, Coca-Cola just uh, contracted us and a few other companies here and there, Talo Oil and Hot Nuts. I usually want to find out from my managers or from my audience, why do organizations have difficulty implementing well-formulated plans and sometimes fail to meet their targets? Why is the most reasonable, analysis-driven, implementable plans sometimes never make it from concept to reality? And the next slide have what I think is the reasons uh, responsible for that. Three reasons I could easily adduce to why execution fails. Number one, lack of direction and strategic uh, uh, lack of direction and uh, leadership or lack of leadership and direction the first reason in my opinion execution fails is lack of leadership and strategic direction and that is at the very heart of how people are, are led my second reason is that i think it is as a result of lack of motivation and employee buy-in if you took a close look at the second point, it is also a question of leadership. Just about a third of the reason, which is number three, in my opinion, I would say it is lack of skill and personal limitation on the part of the worker. So if something goes right, it's because there is leadership, there is direction. It is because we are able to cajole and get an employee buy in to support where we are going and i always tell leaders that leadership is a privileged position and that a leader only succeeds when the people he leads when his followers agree that he does succeed so carrying your people along that a leader without followers is but just taking a stroll carrying your people along is a very integral part of the journey of leadership I imagine most of us listening to me are Ghanaians. If our president, Nana Kufuado, or all cabinet ministers go to meeting with a singular agenda, that the president must fail. Now, I can assure you that he's failed already because his ministers will be at the forefront of implementing or executing his plans. A leader only succeeds when the people he leads agree he does. Next. So, what is it, in my opinion, that I think leadership is that management is not? What is leadership that management is not? First and foremost, I want to say that I have come to realize in my observation that many, and when I say many, I mean it, many of our managers are trained in hardcore management with little or no leadership, the resultant effect of that is that our organizations are overmanaged and underled. I say that again. Many of our organizations or our managers 
are trained in hardcore management with little or no leadership. The resultant effect of that is that many of our companies, many of our divisions, many of our organizations, <laughs> our departments, our units are overmanaged and underlaid. Does having technical skills make you a leader? No, because technical skills is not tantamount to leadership. In the days of the baby boom generation, if we're looking for leaders, they attributed leaders to physical traits, tax relevant knowledge, physical energy. You must be vociferous. You must command respect. You must have energy and uh, name it. They attributed leadership to physical trait, so that if we were looking for the chairman of the Young Farmers Association, we will go inspect everybody's young farm. And naturally, by default, the largest young farmer become the chairman of the Young Farmers Association. He had the knowledge to weed, the muscles to weed and expand his young farm. But if he cannot cast vision, if he cannot provide strategic direction, if you cannot motivate a group of people, inspire them and focus their attention on the accomplishment of the reasons the Young Farmers Association is put in place, it would be a mistake to put him in the, in the leadership seat to provide leadership for the Young Farmers Association. I have researched and realized I have, I have experienced through my short years of experience and engagement with organizations these three key differences between um, management and leadership. So the three of them, as I walk you through, what, man what leadership is that management is not. So I'll be making attempts to be comparing. Can we go back to that slide again, please? I'll be making attempts to be comparing uh, uh, management and leadership to you. First and foremost, in systems, Whilst management is about working in a system, leadership is about working on the system. The operative word that separates the two is management works in a system, leadership works on the system. So whilst management is following meticulously, Whilst management is climbing that ladder to get to the top of that wall, that building, leaders are, all, are always asking, which is the ladder leaning against the right wall? Now, I trained for one of the companies in Ghana in the aviation industry not too long, late last year. And this were the creme de la creme, the executive team of the organization. When I entered, the first question I asked to introduce it is, what are your challenges as a management team here? Listen to the answers. Uh, well, our problem here is the, our system. I wasn't training supervisors. I wasn't training line managers. I was training EXCO, Executive Committee. Now, if EXCO is beginning to blame the system, who fixes the problem? Who fixes the system? Your work as a leader is to always work on the system. Is this the best method that will get us the result? If the system is not the best, what can we do about it? Now, I heard one of our ministers on air not too long, just last week or two ago. You see, the problem with this um, 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 UTAC strike is that if it is not uh, spoken well, it will run the country. Uh, the minister is telling us the problem. Who has been voted for? Giving the power, the authority to solve the problem. He's describing the problem to us. And in that, in my estimation, will not be the best. Leaders focus on fixing and working on the system and not telling us the, 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 the problem. The next area I think leadership differ very much from management. The same slide, yes, the same slide. Number two is processes. Whereas management operates with industry standards. This is how we do things in the aviation industry. This is how things are done in the, bank, in, in the banking industry. This is how things are done in a telco. Management, managers are always operating with industry standards. Leaders function with information. What is best available? What is the customer thinking? What can we do? 
And perhaps this is one of the cardinal principles on which that great company called UT Bank, uh, that uh, that is now defunct, was was founded. Whilst at the time all the traditional banks were saying, "Listen, the industry says you must check collateral, you must check audited accounts, balance, uh, uh, um, uh, audited account, financial statement, business, um, you know, uh, a plan, and all of that." UT is busily championing a tagline if all say no we ask why not tell me your story and you need a loan in 48 hours i'll deliver that money i probably will want to confirm if you have the collateral but everything else everybody thinks is the standard if all say no we will ask you why not the third one is in people whilst management focuses on controlling people leadership is busily engaged with how do we empower people and i've already told you that when the people are taken care of the business is taken care of next for the sake of time now by this presentation i am not demonizing or undermining the importance of management as a matter of fact every good manager must have the ability to combine the hard skill of management with the soft art of leadership Leadership is that soft art, that mild bit of running that organization, that church, that NGO, that business venture, that family, that political organization. Very mild, but has far-reaching consequences on the organization. But as we discuss leadership, before I tell you what I think leadership is, first and foremost, what leadership is not. Call it leadership myths. A myth it's a fallacy, something we have mistaken for, for the truth for a period of time, whereas it's not supposed to be the truth. I have identified three concrete myths in leadership I address with organizations. The first one is what I call the position myth. Position myth. Now, am I demonizing these things? Am I, am I undermining them? No. They, they augment leadership but in themselves might not be leadership. The first one is position myth. If I occupy the position, I am the leader. Wrong. Occupying position gives you access to leadership. Occupying position gives you the right to exercise authority, to apply resources, and to take decisions on behalf of other people to direct people's actions and inactions but in itself may not be leadership now back in the day in the university i was uh, quite fortunate to be the src president in the university and at the time all i needed to be sure i was the src president was for you to call me presido 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 that is how we were enjoying the title uh, misbehaving fooling one year had passed nothing has changed about the students but we were sure that we were the leaders of src because we occupied the position it took me years after school to realize that i was nowhere close that office called the leader of the student body because nothing really was changing about the student now i think that the essence of leadership is change and growth if nothing is changing if nothing is developing if it is not becoming better, if we are not improving on it, change becomes a waste of everybody's time. You can imagine uh, uh, the then candidate, Akufuado, will come before us in 2016. And the central pivot of his campaign message will be, vote for me and the NPP, and when we come to power, we will do everything as the NDC and John Mahama, whether good or bad, we will maintain. You begin to ask yourself, if nothing will change when you come, why should we remove them and bring you? The essence of leadership is change and growth. So when you occupy position and nothing develops, nothing improves, nothing changes, leadership then becomes a waste of everybody's time. The second myth, fallacy, what we have mistaken for leadership, whereas in my opinion is not, is what I choose to call manager myth. I am a tough manager. When I appear, people run helter-skelter probably you are intimidating and not a leader if your presence or otherwise 
cause people to either work or not work, you are intimidating. And may I, may I, may I, may I say that if in your absence nothing gets done, you've not been managing a people, you've not been leading people, you've been managing yourself. If you are not there, and how sad it is, some managers hit their chest and say, "Oh, when I'm not in the office, nothing gets done until I return." Whoa, that is a sign of leadership failure. If in your absence nothing gets done until you come, you've been busily managing yourself and not a department, not a team. The third, and this is most critical, one of the greatest challenges in Africa, I choose to call it the, the knowledge myth. I am the subject matter expert, the SME, chartered accountant, MBA finance, head of the finance team. Nothing will you say about finance make more sense than I do. Wrong. Having technical skills augments you as a leader, adds on to you, but in itself may not make you a leader. There are a few others like personality. Uh, I am handsome, thick, tall, and nice, extroverted. Therefore, I should be the leader. Yes, looking good, great physique, speaking well, being extroverted, carrying, motivating and carrying people along, adds on to you as a leader, but in itself might not be a leader. Being a great speaker, a great communicator, adds on to you. That is what I choose to call the leadership myth. If these things are not leadership, the natural question on your mind is, what then is leadership? And that takes us to our next slide. What then is leadership? Now, I have come across some 356 definitions of leadership in my research work. 356 definitions. And I know that there are more definitions of leadership I am yet to discover. But granted the 356 were the only definitions then mine should qualify to be the 357. That is what I think. I think that leadership involves influence. It occurs amongst people. The people desire significant changes inspired by shared vision. Now, this presentation is supposed to last some 45 minutes. I think I took off. Uh, what time did I take off, uh, uh, Kofi or anybody else? Now, I'm supposed to be doing a 45-minute presentation. On a very oh. good day, if I have to do... Um, yes, Doc, you took off uh, 10 minutes after, so you have... Yeah, you've done about 28 minutes. So 28 yeah, minutes. Good. Granted, it's 13 minutes. I have 15 <laughs> minutes. So let's say I have 17 minutes to go. Yes. Thank you so much, Mr. Name. Now, uh, so in 17 minutes, I should be getting done uh, with the presentation. On a very good day in a leadership workshop or leadership training, I can take each of those pillars in my definition, influence, vision, people, change. I can deliver a five-hour presentation on each of them because I consider them as the key or cardinal principles. But I'm going to do a summarized work. What is vision? In my very much opinion, vision is capturing the future registering it on your mind, and using it to drive the present day's actions. Capture the future. Register it on your mind. Let that registration inform everything you do. And if it is a vision, it must satisfy the following qualities. One, it must contradict the present. If your vision looks like today, it is not a vision, because visions are always futuristic. If it is a vision... It must question your laziness. It must confront your comfort zone. And it must challenge your indecision. If it is vision, it must focus your attention. If it is vision, it must attract your resources. The second pillar in that um, definition is influence. Now, let me say that vision hinges a lot on communication. I, I, I have worked through too many organizations where... They have written vision, um, um, hang it at a reception in a frame. And when you get into the training room and engage the manager to tell you the vision statement of the company, they are now looking for a document to read it to you because a vision is not part of them. All right. So that is it. Communication. I'm not just talking about vision, but inspiring shared vision to carry the team along. 
the next key or cardinal word there is influence. Now, perhaps one of the critical areas of influencing followers is integrity. And let me say this. Nobody follows you until he thinks he can trust you. And nobody will trust you until he thinks you have integrity. Now, may I say this? When leaders begin to suffer integrity questions or problems, followers begin to suffer commitment problems. The moment the leader have integrity questions, followers will have commitment questions. Can I have all of you look at me? I'm sure everybody can see me on the screen. Let me have all of you scratch your chin. Everybody scratch your chin. Oh, did I catch people scratching, uh, scratching their cheek? I said scratch your chin. You were scratching your chin. The reason is that you were scratching your cheek. Your cheek. The leader who asked you to scratch your chin was scratching his cheek. Now, anytime the leader's words come in conflict with his action, the followers are compelled to choose the action and not the words. Because your action is too loud in the ears of the followers, so much so that they cannot hear what you are saying. Integrity means walk your talk. Do what you say you will do. Or do what you say and what you preach. As simple as that. Now, many of you forgot what chin is because you saw me scratching my cheek. Now, at the time I, I asked you to scratch your, your cheek, your chin, my cheek was itching. But was I allowed to obey that quest to scratch my cheek? No, because it was capable of misleading you and it did mislead you. What is the wisdom, the leadership lesson in that? The moment you become a leader, you don't live for yourself. You live for the people who look up to you because all your actions all your actions consciously, unconsciously, are copiously, cogently being copied by all your followers with or without your permission. So you want to be very careful how you carry yourself because the moment you become a leader, everything you do is interpreted and copied. The next pillar is the people beat and the people runs or rides on emotional intelligence. If you cannot lead and manage people, you are not ready for the position of leadership. Now, leading people is naturally difficult and it's been a Herculean task six times in memoria. You are not the first. Why is leading people difficult? Because people have a mind of their own. They think for themselves. They make their own choices. They have different perspectives to things. And more so, the human mind is highly erratic. So to be a leader, you would first learn to listen to people to listen to people, make an attempt to understand them before seeking to be understood. But the reason two people quarrel or two people fight is that we appreciate the same thing from two different perspectives. I went to Akosombo to run a training for VRA. On lunchtime, I, I myself and my PA drove to a local uh, restaurant because they were serving some food. I didn't want to eat as a village man. I wanted Banku. And when we went to that local restaurant and finished taking our meal, we were looking for the lady who served us. We couldn't find her. We have to fall on another waitress to fetch her for us. So we resorted to describing that lady. Oh, one slim, tall, a lady with no earring on. Those were my words. My personal assistant said, no, she was wearing earring. We battled it out for about four minutes. She was on ring. She wasn't on ring. She was on ring. She wasn't on ring. Eventually, the lady came and she had one ring on, one ring off. We were both correct. The side of her that I saw had no ring. The side of her that my colleague or my PA saw had ring. We appreciated the same person from two different perspectives. Any slight patience to try to understand it. Wait, every human being have two ears. Could it be that the side of her that I saw had a ring and the other side had no ring? If we had taken time a little bit to listen to try to understand the next person before seeking to be understood. Chances are that we will not have argued. Change is an integral part of leadership, which is another pillar. And until there is change, I went to train in one of these beverage companies and the sales director was bragging to me. Before I came here, 
we were doing this quantum of crate of let me not mention the product else you know the company we we're doing the crate of xyz product per week when i came i made sure we didn't go below that i maintained the status quo and i smiled because here is a manager talking to me managers worship take care of what is giving them maintain the status quo a manager can be likened to a thermometer you know what thermometers do they measure the temperature and give a report on it that is it the economy is harsh resources are not there they, 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 all, they can always outline the challenges to you leaders are thermostat what does a thermostat do it regulate the temperature of the environment if it is cool it will warm it if it is warm it will cool it or if it is cold uh it will warm it if it is hot it will cool it managers might be thermometers but leaders are thermostat next slide i'll be wrapping up in about 10 minutes uh, my time would have been up in 10 minutes this is what i think the essence of leadership is change and growth that is what i think this is what carol brand said some people make things happen some people watch things happen and then there are those who wonder what the hell just happened i don't know which of them you are but i can say that leaders make things happen do not watch things happen or wonder at what happened one of my favorite corporate leaders i have followed very cogently read every material he ever published is the man jack welch jack welch died sometime last year february or so jack welch was the former chairman and ceo of general electric a 400,000 capacity employee company at the time he took over he said no organization small or large can win over the long run without constant changes and energized employees who believe in the mission and understand how to achieve it next slide my thoughts simply on team leader team team building laws everybody every person in position of leadership leads a team or manages a team first law the law of purpose and vision people don't gather for fun when they do you must always be sharing the mission why are we here where are we going Number two, the law of integrity and trust. Nobody follows you until he trusts you. Nobody will trust you until he thinks you have integrity. When leaders suffer integrity problems, followers will suffer commitment problems. Number three, the law of charisma and motivation. There's a sleeping lion in everybody. But it takes leaders to wake those lions up in people and make them row. Listen, people have the ability to do great stuff. But the right motivation is not there. Ask a pregnant woman to run. Five month pregnancy. She will remind you of her pregnancy. I can't run, I'm pregnant. Don't worry. Release the wild dog after her and watch whether he, she will manage to run or not. The ability to run was in her, but she didn't have the right motivation. Here you are on the first floor of a building, and then you have your, your child, your one year toddler on the ground floor. We said, uh, Akia, can you jump from the first floor to the ground floor? You say, are you mad? How do you want to kill me? I can't jump. Okay. In the next one minute after that, you saw a snake moving towards your one year a child. You know that he doesn't know snake. And when the snake bites, he could die. You don't have the luxury of going around and using the stairs. There's no lift. Take my word of honor, you are already on the floor. The ability to jump was already in you, but you didn't have the right motivation. Leaders provide the right motivation for followers to flourish and to meet their target. Now, the shark can grow only eight inches when it is put in a small container, but can grow as much as eight feet when it is in the open ocean. You, you the leader, you are, the, you are supposed to be the ocean to the employee who is the shark. His, his ability, the employee's ability to grow is largely dependent on what kind of leadership you provide. The last but one is the law of communication and information flow. People want to know what is going on. People want to be carried on uh, uh, along. The last one 
is the law of respect and inclusion. Now, when you follow these laws, people follow you. Next slide. So, just some quick comparison. Whilst bosses call them managers, while the manager uh, uh, drives employees, the leader coaches employees. Whilst the manager depends on authority, the leader depends on goodwill. What leadership is that management is not. Whilst the leader inspires fear, the, ma the manager inspires fear, the leader generate enthusiasm whilst the manager say i the leader say we whilst the manager uh, places blame on breakdown of the system the economy and what have you the leader focuses on how do we fix the breakdown whilst the manager knows how it is done the leader shows how it is done whilst the manager uses people the leader develops people Whilst the manager takes the credits, the leader gives the credits. Whilst the manager commands, the leader asks. Whilst the manager says go, the leader says let's go. Next slide. Next slide. So this is the man Jack Welch. I just want to share... Uh, quick leadership tips from him, and then we are done. Who is Jack Walsh? Chairman and CEO of General Electric, 1981 to 2000. He grew the market value of General Electric from a $13 billion market, uh, $13 billion market value to $400 billion under the leadership of one person. And that Jack Walsh, you are either number one or number two in whichever market you operate in now. General Electric is a conglomerate. He inherited over 100 businesses and told each of the general managers of the businesses under General Electric, be number one or number two, or I will scrap the business. That is what we call, a, 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 what we call it. Um, I've just forgotten the terminology. Let's go. Now, um, Jack Walsh created the world's most competitive enterprise on earth, General Electric at the time. He executed tremendous transformational leadership, so much so that he was adjudged the number one business leader the world has seen in the whole of the last century. Adjudged by respected media houses as the Wall Street Journal, the New York Times, and what have you. Next slide. <clears throat> this is his simple advice, and I don't have the time to articulate all of them. Jack Welch said, lead more and manage less. If you want the company to grow, articulate a vision, create a learning culture by building leaders. Don't tolerate bureaucracy, blow it off. Face reality and stop assuming. He said, change. It is an opportunity, not a threat. I did a leader, a change leadership for Bank of Ghana folks, and I was telling them that. Change is already coming. It's already happening. If you don't take advantage of it, we will leave you behind. It is not you want to change or not. You have to be coping. Otherwise, you are left behind. Because the moment the, the external forces of change exceed the internal forces of change, the end is in sight. For the sake of time, we'll leave the rest. But I'm sure, uh, I don't know the policy of the organization, the uh, Center for Transformational Leadership. Uh, maybe they will share the slides with you. Jack Welch says, lead by energizing others, not by managing by authority. Defy, not respect tradition. Strive to be number one, not doing internal benchmarking. Uh, at least we did better than last year. What is your market share? That is what Jack Welch is saying. Say, put values first, not numbers. Get good ideas from everywhere. Bible says, the, 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 the God uses the foolishness of the world to confine the wise. There are good ideas from everywhere. Sometimes all you need to do is to place a demand on that employee. What do you think about this? You'll be amazed what he'll share with you. Even if it is not the original idea you want, through that, you generate a better one. And then he said, get good ideas from everywhere. Finally, pounce every day. Don't move with caution. Last slide. Let's go next one. 
That is my last but one. And this is coming from Narayana Murphy, who is supposed to be the CEO of the largest IT firm in, 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 in India, if I'm not mistaken. She said, our assets, the people that run the organization, our assets walk out of the door each evening. We have to make sure they come back the next morning. I'm not talking about coming back in body. We conducted a research. My institute, HR Certification Institute, conducted a research and realized that as much as 68% of Ghanaian workers are disengaged. They go to work all right. However, however, they are not with the organization. Only 32% are. The people must return the following morning with their heart, their soul, their commitment to the organization. And I want to say a big thank you to you. Let's have a thank you slide. I want to say a big thank you to you for the opportunity to share my thoughts with you. Short time, but I believe you were able to pick a one or two lessons. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Yim. You can have the floor, sir. It's so good. Thank you so much, Jeff. Um, we really, really appreciate you. And there's so many comments and uh i'm not going to waste time at all because i can see so many comments and i believe there are more questions coming up so i want to thank you uh for this very great presentation and i believe that um those of you on the call have benefited so much thank you so much take some rest and we'll come back to you uh when the questions start coming through all right so um before we go on, I want to encourage all of you who are on the call that the Growth Journey program is on. Um, the third cohort is on its fifth week and it's great learning going on. We are still registering for the fourth cohort. It's only 15 members joining each cohort. So we encourage you to be able to, to, to register now, so I'm going to ask Kofi if he's ready to just share the, 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 the promo with us and then we'll come back and answer a few questions. Kofi, let's go. Hi, dear friend. My name is Samuel Ayim and I'm the CEO for the Center for Transformational Leadership. And I'm bringing to you the growth journey. We've set aside 15 weeks of growth to help you to be intentional about your growth. Where do you want to reach in your leadership? Which area of your life do you want to grow in? Growth doesn't just happen. It has to be intentional. So in these 15 weeks, we're going to have a special coaching sessions with you to be able to grow to where you want to grow. And to be able to grow yourself, you need to know yourself. A lot of us, are not achieving the maximum we can achieve because we have not invested in our personal growth. We're going to help you in all and more within these 15 weeks. Every week we'll have a session with you. This program is limited to only 15 people. We're going to have 15 people for 15 weeks and we're going to learn 15 great growth lessons on this journey. So make a date with us and see you on the growth journey. Thank you very much. And we encourage you um, to, to, to register uh, for the growth journey. Um, currently, we have 15 amazing, amazing executive senior people um, people from all background, architects, accountants, bankers, um, and, and they're learning great things. Some of them are just getting surprised with some of the things we are learning on the growth journey. And we encourage all of you to register for the next cohort. As soon as we have 15 people, we are, we are setting off. So we're not waiting for the third cohort to end. We continue. Uh, we are running them in parallels. So we have so many people on the call um we have uh, we have collins uh nai on the call he says he's from community 10 we have wavo joining from togo we have na adofo he says happy to listen to the words uh na latele 
uh, joining from East Legon. Say, Mami, I'm uh, here. It's great to be here. Uh, we have Phil Fogio, uh, Lawson joining from Gomuafete. Richard Buampon says, I'm learning a lot this evening. Thank you, uh, Brad Samuel, for always bringing us very resourceful persons to teach us. God bless you from Accra. Thank you so much, Richard. Ebenezer Niamas is very insightful. Um, um, he says, very insightful. Uh, Niyama is a relationship officer of uh, heritage, he says. Okay. Enoch Esiama, he says, John C. Maxwell said, everything rises and falls on leadership. You are perfectly right. Well done, sir. All right. Edwin Ike is, says, very insightful. He's here. Hajia Alima Sagitu, good evening. And she's very, she says, this is very good content. She's joining us from Tamale. Um, Eunice Krantima says, very insightful. He says, fantastic submissions. Martin Asiaka, Asiako, Frando uh, is watching from Asimfo Sioux. We have people from all over the country. Mami uh, Bafo is joining us all the way from Holland. David can come. Great, great wisdom. I'm blessed. Uh, by your leadership and management skills. God bless you. Thank you, David. Patrick Aforis is very revealing knowledge shared. I especially find the thermostat, uh, the thermometer and the thermostat analogy very useful. All right. Thank you so much. Thanks for sharing. Um, Isaka Sunday from Burkina Faso is with us here. Thank you. He says, congratulations. Martin Asiakos is very insightful. I'm looking for a question. Let your questions flow. Much thanks to Jeff. Maybe Jeff has so explained it. No more questions. He's a great teacher. Um, Akwesi can come joining us from London. Says sometimes I thought I have already listened to a good presentation until I watched tonight's presentation. You have given me a very different definition about leadership and who a leader should be. Great. Thank you so much. William says, great gold nuggets shared. Most grateful. Now, Latili say, wow, awesome presentation. I've really learned a lot. All right. Now, Adolfo says, my business is currently strategizing to scale up our operation. This lesson is very insightful and timely. Many thanks, Doc and ctl africa all right so doc um you've you've explained so well nobody wants to ask a question very insightful from melody Ape, apeji thank you so much miss abby great presentation from the presentation it looks like there is a general disconnect between uh merging leadership and management do you think culture our bringing and our environment plays a role. So, Doc, one great question there for you. We will come back to you. Uh, Miss Abby is saying that um, it seems there is a general disconnect between uh, leadership and management, and he's asking if you think the culture, our bringing, and our environment plays a role. All right. Uh, Phoebe says, I have it. Oh, I love it. Whatever. All right, so uh, there's only one question for now. So, um, Doc, I want you to come back and uh, answer that question for us. And what accounts for this disconnect between management and leadership? Um, because uh, as you have explained, there's maybe so many Good, so many leaders, managers who are not leading, and we need more leaders. All right, go ahead, sir. All right, um, thank you so much uh, for the opportunity once more, and for the person who uh, asked the question. My candid opinion, just my opinion. Um, yes, I think that culture 
upbringing environment will have some impact on the kind of leadership we see here. Now, you, you heard me share my experience as an SLC president back in the university. And for me, all I needed to be sure I was the president was for people to call me by the title president. I was driving the SRC vehicle and uh, 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 um, what do I call it? Using the SRC bungalow. And if you like, spending a bit of the money and enjoying the position and the euphoria and everything that came along with it. But really, where the student's uh, welfare was improving, was I causing any change? No. Guess what? The same people who play ball with SRC on campuses are the very ones in national politics today. And I can tell you that the average person thinks that once I am given the title of the minister, it makes me a leader. Hell no. If we, 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 we measure using the, the leadership litmus tests, many of the ministers will fall. Many of the DCEs might fall. Now, how do we even appreciate leadership here? A person is called a minister. Minister designates. When he's going to parliament, his whole village will follow him to parliament. They'll go and drum and dance. Drumming and dancing for achieving what? Probably nothing. But he got a position. Because we have reduced leadership to position. The guy has not done anything yet. But we are drumming and dancing because he has the title the position so it's a cultural issue now may i also say that you see you go the destination you face because destination determines or where you face determines where you you are destined to to belong now the only way to change the result is when you affect the methodology. The Chinese have one important proverb I don't joke with. Doing the same thing the same way, expecting different results is insanity. The best way to measure the effectiveness of a system is the result it produces. Look at our result around here, around Africa. Who are the people who have been in charge? Now, this was a statement I made when those days Barack Obama was championing this uh, program for Africa, YALI, the Young Leaders, uh, 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 the Young African Leaders Initiative. I was one of the resource persons for many of the, the, the leadership sessions we have with these young persons. That if you want to see a different Africa, you have to change because uh, if the result now we are not, we don't like it, then the people who have been in charge possibly have not been great leaders. And you may want to change the route. Now, human beings are the only creatures who have the ability to listen to advice, who have the ability to be motivated and to change the course of their action. All other animals, all other creatures, animals, only obey instincts and genetic code. But a human being can live in the south for two years and go to the north for five years broke for five years, that rich for another five years, that bad and influence in society for five years, that great and influence for another five years. Because we have the ability to change the course of our actions. Now, you cannot change destination overnight, but you can change your roots overnight. That will guarantee a different destination tomorrow. So yes, the upbringing is that in leadership, you see, um, leadership is infectious and repetitive. Life itself is infectious and repetitive. The reason you and I drink sachet water in Ghana and throw the plastic bag by the roadside is not necessarily your initiative. That is what you see people do or every day. Why do we lift you from the street of Accra and place on the street of New York and you don't throw it? You know why? You've never seen anybody do that on the street of New York, so you won't do it too. We live in New York for five years, bring you back to Ghana, and for the first month, you have problem with people throwing plastic bags by the roadside. The second time, same. The third time, same. The third month. If nothing significant shifts in your mind, I tell you, by the fourth month, you will start throwing it too. You know why? 
That is what you see people do around you all the time. And may I say that the culture of a people, the culture of an organization, the culture of a company, the culture of a community is simply the behavior its leadership allows. So because leadership here allows mediocrity or mistake mediocrity for excellence, the young ones grow in it. So until we come in touch with different information, like the platform created by Center for Transformational Leadership, and to change the course of our actions, we will end up like how the people before us ended up. So yes, there might be cultural influence, there must be environmental, there might be upbringing, but there is hope to listen to advice, to assess new information, and to do things differently that will create different results. Good. All right. Thank you so much, Jeff, for those uh, insights, additional insights. Very, very, very useful. Nihansi says, can we have the list of the 365 definitions? You have to read all the leadership books in the world <laughs> to have the 365. But you can also Google them and you will get them. But um, I actually mentioned 356, 356. That's what okay. I came across so far. Mm. All right. So somebody wants the list of all of them. So please <laughs> go and pay a bit and he will give it to you. <laughs> <laughs> Neil Hansen says, awesome presentation, a lot to chew on. Adam says, God, Adam Mensah says, God bless you. I'm a lecturer. But when it comes to the leadership platform, I become a student. Thank you so much uh, because you. we are here to learn. Nee Hansen is asking if there are books, uh, any books to share for reading. Um, I'm sure when we come back, um, Doc will share. But I can tell you, read John C. Maxwell, The 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership on this subject. Also, you will get great insight. Um, there's a question for you. Um, uh, Dinam Zoku, um, um, commander, is asking, are leaders born? This is a natural question I was expecting. And uh, Nihansi says, has he written any books on leadership and management for our reading? Okay, so Ni wants books, so, uh, so Doc will tell us um, shortly. Uh, Fabi says, I have the intention of forming a business. Should I be a manager or a leader? So the two questions there, a few of uh, information questions, but one question is, are leaders born? And Phoebe is asking, uh, he has intention of forming a business. He should be a manager or he should be a leader. <laughs> okay, Collins is asking, what do you think is going to help to merge these two ideologies seamlessly? Is it better education? All right, so that's another question. How can we merge the two? Um, our leadership, uh, okay, our leadership born or created, which is same question that has been asked. And uh, the last comment I have here, Anita uh, Al Alon, I believe is the name. Great lesson learned, like the scratching of chin and cheek analogy. Thank you, Dr. Bassey. All right. So as we always say on the platform, everybody we bring on this platform and every subject we bring, we're just scratching the surface. You know, this subject, as he said, he can, I mean, just a segment of it we can teach for, for, for hours on this subject. And Dr. Bassey is doing a lot of training. So you also want to get in touch with him or get your organizations also to get in touch. So, uh, Doc, um, a few questions have come along. So please take us through that one. We have a, a few more minutes, so 10 minutes. Right. I'm sure along the line, you'll be refreshing my memory on some of the questions. Yes, no but problem. I think uh, two and... of the questions are managers born or, 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 or created <laughs> or, or, or whatever. Well, so that's first the first foremost, question. First and foremost, I I naturally don't like uh, getting involved in the, that discourse of our managers born or made. Can I say that it does not matter? 
It doesn't matter whether a manager is born or made. Management, leadership is a skill. Anybody can learn to become a leader. Of a fact, I don't believe that leaders are born. No. Leaders might be born with certain traits which need to be refined. In any case, leadership is too dynamic. Now, lately I've been focusing on uh, my leadership lessons to organizations, understanding followers. And I've spent hours researching and training on understanding followers. In the days of the baby boom generation, many of them are dead and gone. But let's, let's compare the X generation and the Y generation. The X generation guys who are mostly in positions of leadership, I will not doubt the fact that there are a lot of Y guys who are so... Now, X generation, those who are born like uh, around 1964 to 79, then if you are born after the 1980, you are considered Y generation. So if the X guy is the chief executive or the manager and the Y guy for recent is the worker, there's a lot of variation between us. Unfortunately for me, I belong to the Y generation. What is used to describe us, I don't like it. <laughs> so we don't respect, no respect for, 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 uh, um, um, how do I call it? For tradition, uh, for, tradition for systems, for leadership, for processes and all of that. But the one thing I like about Y generation is that we are results driven. We, we, we are goal, goal oriented. But the S guy <clears throat> swallows hook, line, and sinker anything you tell him. We are going, we are moving from Legon to Accra. He will, uh, Legon to Tema. He will ask you, which road do we use? Motorway, Spinter's Road, or we are using the beach road. The white generation guy doesn't want you to tell, to select road from him. Just tell me we are going to Tema. Leave me alone. I'll find my way to Tema. Okay. These are the guys who challenge the leader, who contest your decision. You must make sense to him and what have you. And then some manager said, well, if you do that, I will suck. If you suck him and bring a new guy, he will also behave the same. So can we learn about the white generation guy? In any case, managing an organization have moved from control and command, giving instructions to now building partnerships. And if you are a leader and listening to me, please, Leadership is a privileged position, not a right. Don't use it against anybody. And those of you who are running your own, you find a company, you have, you have employed people. It is so funny in this country how the employers think they are doing a favor to the employee. Let's check it. You have found a vision. Somebody decided to support your vision to grow. Who is doing the other a favor? The worker is doing you a favor by supporting the father you pay him something small called salary it's not enough supporting to make sure your vision see the light of day the moment you understand this the dynamics of the the owner or the employer the superior and the workers change because you must be lucky for him to accept to work for you so we have moved from con command and control According to Douglas McGregor, the theory X and theory Y. Theory X guys believe that employees are lazy, they are self-seeking, they are laid back, they will never put in a good day's job by themselves. And so if you're a manager and you want to get results from them, keep them under strict surveillance. Threaten them with punishment or promise them rewards. Otherwise, you won't get the best out of them. Managers with this kind of orientation tend to operate from autocratic style of leadership. Then there is the theory why that say, listen, employees are not lazy. They are not self-seeking. All you need to do is to share vision, provide strategic direction, create good working conditions, <clears throat> and motivate them, and they by themselves will get you the result. If you are oriented towards theory why, you normally will operate from a democratic style of leadership. Somebody is busily asking, which one is better than the other? Both. Leadership is too situational. Maybe 80% of the time we may go for theory Y. Some 20% of the time, theory X. Folks, when you see a snake, you kill it. You don't form a committee. You don't write memos to people 
and then invite them to a meeting who will give the opening prayer who is taking minutes that who is who, let's now strategize who are the people who will hold long sticks who will hold shortly the snake is there waiting for you not so no the situation demands what you do but many a time great leaders of theory why workers would need to adopt the theory why you you just don't give an instruction go and do this you give the reason for the instruction in any case when people know the consequences of inaction, they are more motivated to act. So you don't just give blanket directive or instructions. You give the conventional reason behind the instruction. And once it makes sense to people, you see, involvement breeds commitment. When people are part of the decision, they understand why. They don't need you to police them to get a job done. Whether leaders are born or not, leadership is a skill. Anybody can learn it and will become a great leader. Good. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, I think there are, there are related questions. Somebody was asking whether he's trying to start a business. Should she be a leader or a manager? Please, um, be, please be a leader. Cast the vision. <laughs> provide a strategic direction hire managers and convert them into leaders be a leader hire absolutely. managers convert them into leaders but you also remember that doc says that there are some skills the management skills that you need to you need to get also so um he says he's not undermining the role of management um he says i wish you elevate the game move from there to leadership okay all right so um the other question was, how do we merge the leadership and management? Um, how, how can we merge the two? Um, so that was the other question. I think you've talked quite a bit about that, but if you have a few words on that, that would be good. Mm -hmm. um, well, we, we encourage everybody to have the ability to combine the hard skill of management with the soft art of leadership. So we are not talking about a leader on one hand, a manager on the other ability yeah. to put the two together and uh, i think that it's now you can always pick skills go to school and get management but leadership must be acquired don't mistake the fact that because you are a good manager you also double it just the consciousness be aware that there is a need to learn leadership and not just because you have the certificate and you are a manager that is all there is to do so if you already pick the leaders the management skill you only move to acquire now uh, mr yim if i can do this for one minute yes. now this is how the leadership journey starts there's some the, it, it's a four skill journey the first one is what we call uh, ui ui represents unconscious incompetence you are not a leader yet you don't even know there is something called leadership or its importance then you move to what we call ci conscious incompetence now you have started listening to leadership lectures leadership lessons you know there is a need for leadership, though you are not one yourself yet. You have moved from the UI unconscious incompetence to conscious incompetence. Then you move to what we call CC, conscious competence. You are now, a, you are becoming a leader. Instead of raising your voice at that employee that came late, you would rather call him and have an engagement. Why are you late? Before you punish or reward, it must always run on the back of an engagement. Now, communication and engagement are one of the powerful tools of every leader. Always ask questions. Why this? Why that? Why this? Why that? Then when you engage and then eventually you respond instead of react, there's a difference between the two. Reaction is spontaneous. It's unreasonable. You raise your voice. You regret after everything. Reacting, sorry, uh, responding happens at a good time. Uh, 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 happens in a better way than reacting. And then you tell yourself, whoa, I'm becoming a leader. You are, you are becoming competent, but you are so conscious of yourself. Over time, it becomes, that is how you do things. Then you now move into what we call UC, unconscious competence. You have now become a leader. It flows naturally that you are not even aware because any other way will not make sense to you, but to do it the right way. So it's a journey. And by even signing up to this program, I know that everybody had already moved. If you are not already higher on the skill, 
you have moved from level one, which is unconscious incompetence, to now knowing that there is something called leadership that plays a role in managing organizations. The next one is to becoming, and then very soon, that will be you. Right. Thank you so much. And that is very, very, very useful. The levels of awareness, um, which we, we grow through. So very, very useful. All right. Um, I think the questions are done. Um, so you have Conrad, who says, Conrad Kakrava, glad to hear my good mentor, Dr. Jeff Bassey, on fire this evening. Keep enlightening our generation, Doc. So, Doc, uh, we thank you for... Thank you so much. When, when you have somebody as a mentor and he also thinks you are, you are, you are his mentor, then you are in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for those kind All words. Right. I, so, I, 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 thank I you so, so much. Um, I don't see any more questions. I see uh, Commander Dinam says nice explanation. So, um, guys, I think we are heading to the end of the hour. We just want to encourage all of you um, to continue to share, to like our Facebook share this platform to other people, invite people. And we remind you that the growth journey is on. We're enjoying ourselves and learning much, much more on how to grow. So we encourage you to register. Um, but because I don't see any other question, let me check out with uh, Sarah, who is uh, hiding somewhere in Geneva. Let's see, Sarah. Uh, if you have any questions, I don't know if Abigail has any questions. Um, let's see. Uh, we have just two minutes. Sarah. It's really been great, very insightful. And I remember somebody asked, and I think it's Doc who asked whether we're going to make available uh, the slides. Indeed, Doc, we're going to make it available. And for those who were not able to join us from the very beginning you have access to it on our platform that you can take these notes don't just leave it please use it as notes to grow yourself from unconsciously competent to becoming consciously competent so doc mm -hmm. thank you so much for this lesson it's been really great thank you all right thank you sarah thank for you. this comment I think on that note, once again, um, we're going to thank everybody for coming. Um, oh, I see Elkana Balandia from Tanzania. Thank you, Elkana, because at this time, Tanzania is three hours ahead. So it's getting into midnight and you're still online learning with us. So thank you so much, uh, Elkana, for joining us from Tanzania. All right. So... On that note, we want to thank God Almighty. We believe that he's inspired us. We believe that we've learned something this evening that is going to help enhance our leadership. That is the promise of this platform, that we will be able to bring in a bit more enlightenment onto our understanding of leadership that will move from our so-called leaders describing the problems to us and being actually change agents and changing the things and not complaining to us <laughs> as citizens, not blaming us as citizens that we are the problem, but taking the responsibility and solving the problem. We also want to change the narrative that once you're a leader, all you have is the benefit. And we focus on just the benefit, the benefit, the benefit, and we're not taking responsibility to do things. So um, I give the last minute to Doc to give us his just final closing words, and then we would call it a day. Right. Just to say a thank you to everyone who made time to uh, hear our thoughts on the subject of leadership that we do not take for uh, granted. We know we have uh, we engage great people, and uh, having your time and sharing your thoughts with us, uh, it's not uh, to be taken for granted. Uh, Mr. Yim had... Uh, mentioned to me that I could casually mention the organization I lead. So we lead the professional charter in human resources, the global certification. We are the approved providers in Ghana, the HR certification center. Just when you want to certify as a human resource professional, all the great companies in this country 
have had their HR certified with us from MTN to Bank of Ghana to Echo Bank to uh, Talo and all those big companies. You may want to contact us by probably contacting uh, uh, Center for Transformational Leadership. We are also available. We, do, we run several in-house leadership, people management, performance coaching uh, workshops or trainings for several companies, both in and outside Ghana. You can contact us through the uh, uh, Center for Transformational Leadership. My personal number is on the slides. The slides I just shared, as it comes to you, that is my number. And if you want any of our services, you can always engage us. We want to say a thank you to all of you. Uh, we are looking forward to seeing everybody at the top of leadership uh, someday to come. Thank you so much and have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you so very much, Doc. We appreciate you. And to all of you who have made the time to share your Saturday evening with us, we don't take it for granted. We appreciate you and we thank you and we wish you well. We hope that you are going to be a step ahead in your leadership. God bless all of us and may the Lord take care of us and give us a sound sleep. Have a good night to all of you. Doc, you will stay on for a few minutes. We will wrap up with you after the closing. Thank you. Right, okay. Hi, dear friend. My name is Samuel Ayim and I'm the CEO for the Center for Transformational Leadership. And I'm bringing to you the growth journey. We've set aside 15 weeks of growth to help you to be intentional about your growth where do you want to reach in your leadership which area of your life do you want to grow in growth doesn't just happen it has to be intentional so in these 15 weeks we're going to have a special coaching sessions with you to be able to grow to where you want to grow and to be able to grow yourself you need to know yourself. A lot of us are not achieving the maximum we can achieve because we have not invested in our personal growth. We're going to help you in all and more within these 15 weeks. Every week we'll have a session with you. This program is limited to only 15 people. We're going to have 15 people for 15 weeks and we will learn 15 great growth lessons on this journey so make a date with us and see you on the growth journey